Hey guys, this is Miss Bufford, and in this video, we're going to talk about covalent nomenclature and formula writing. So your learning goals here are to be able to write the formulas for covalent compounds when given the names, and then be able to name covalent compounds when you're given the formulas. And so I think, you know, naming uh, covalent compounds and writing their formulas is a bit easier than doing it for ionic substances. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So um, we're naming binary covalent compounds in this class. We're not going to name anything more complicated than that. Um, so these are just basically covalent compounds that have two um, types of elements in them. Um, so we need to know, in order to name these compounds, some covalent prefixes. And we also need to have the common nonmetallic roots handy for us to use. Um, and the reason we need these prefixes is um, for covalent compounds, the way that they bond um, can be different. You can have, you know, different ratios of carbon and oxygen in different compounds um, just because of the way that they're bonding with each other. And this is not always ne not necessarily the case with ionic substances. Um, we can determine the ratio of ionic uh, or, or of elements in an ionic compound based on their charges, but it's a little bit different with covalent compounds. Their bonding is a little bit more flexible um, as far as, you know, what they're able to do. And so we have to use the prefixes um, to describe the number of each type of atom in each um, covalent molecule. And so um, let's go ahead and get started here with this compound, CO2. We need to give this a name. And step one is to write the name of the first element in the formula, which we've got carbon first there, so I'm going to write carbon. And then I need to uh, look at the formula. If there's a subscript number after the, element, the first element symbol, then I want to use a prefix for that number at the beginning of the element's name. Um, one rule that we need to follow here with this, though, is that we never use the prefix mono at the beginning of a chemical name. So in this case, because there's only one carbon, I would not use monocarbon at the, you know, mono at the beginning of this um, chemical name. So I could just leave carbon as carbon in this case. Um, then I want to write the non-metallic root for the second element in the formula, and I want it to end with IDE. So that's oxygen. So if I look down here at my common non-metallic roots, um, the common non-metallic root for oxygen is ox, and then I end it with IDE. And then if there is a subscript number after the second element, I want to write a prefix for that number at the beginning of the second element's name. So in this case, I have a 2 after that oxygen. So I want to look over here at my common uh, prefixes or my covalent prefixes. And a 2 is a prefix of di. So I'm going to add di in front of that. So I end up with carbon dioxide, right? So that is the name for this compound right here. That's carbon dioxide. All right, so what I would like for you to do is go ahead and pause this video and see if you can name these four compounds, and we'll come back and talk about these in just a minute. All right, so hopefully you had an opportunity to pause the video, and let's go ahead and take a look at the names of these compounds. So this first one right here, we've got carbon and chlorine. And um, so I'm going to name that first element right here as carbon. I've got four chlorine atoms in here, so I'm going to use the prefix tetra. And then the nonmetallic uh, root for chlorine is chlor. And then I end it with IDE, so carbon tetrachloride. The second one here, this is water. And normally, if you would see this, you would just call it water. But just for technicalities and you know the, pur the purposes of um, learning how to use these naming rules, we're going to go ahead and give it its um, formal name here. So we have dihydrogens. We've got two hydrogens in this formula. And so I can use other prefixes at the beginning. So dihydrogen. And then I have oxygen. I've only got one oxygen, so I'm going to use mono. And since mono ends with O and oxide begins with O, we only need one O, so you don't have to repeat that. So you can just say mon and then ox and then end it with IDE. So dihydrogen monoxide. 
All right. Um, the next one we have P2O3. And so I'm going to say I've got two phosphorus atoms, so diphosphorus. And then tris for that three, tri, ox for oxygen, and IDE, so diphosphorus trioxide. For the last compound, I've got silicone. There's four silicone atoms, so tetrasilicone. And then I've got five oxygens. Pent is the prefix for five. And then oxide, pentoxide. All right, so tetrasilicone pentoxide. So um, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions about this, go ahead and put it in your notes. And now let's go on to talk about how we translate a um, compound's name, a, co a covalent compound's name, into a formula. All right, so we're, we're now we're writing formulas when we're given the names. And so step one here is to write the symbol for the first element given the name. Um, all right, so we've got dinitrogen. So I'm going to write nitrogen, and it's there's a prefix in front of that, di, that means two. So I'm going to write a little subscript two after that nitrogen. And then I'm going to just write the symbol for the second element in the formula, followed by the number indicated by the prefix. So I just have to look at the common non-metallic root that's used here to figure out that that is oxygen. And tri is the prefix for three, and so that's a little three after that oxygen, and that's it. Nit uh, N2O3 is dinitrogen trioxide. All right, so that's pretty easy, um, pretty simple. All right, so uh, what I'd like for you to do is go ahead and pause the video again and see if you can write the formulas for these compounds, and then we'll come back and talk about them. All right, so hopefully you had an opportunity to pause the video again and give these a try. So let's go ahead and take a look at our answers here. So carbon disulfide, we just have one carbon and two sulfur atoms right here. Um, disulfur, so two sulfur atoms here as well. And then deca is the uh, prefix for 10. And fluoride, so fluoride is fluorine and there's 10 after that. All right dichloride so two chlorine atoms monoxide so just one oxygen so remember we don't need to double up our o's there and then boron tribromide i've got boron right here and then tri is three and brome right here if we look at our common non-metallic roots that's bromine oops that's not bromine that's right there bromine uh bromide all right and there's three of those um, so hopefully this was helpful as well. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in your notes and we'll talk about them in class. And I will see you guys then. Thanks for watching Buffer Chemistry. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more chemistry help.